we dialed up the weather this morning and uh, we've done well. It's Very magnificent. And, and, and again, thank you for coming. It's, uh, it's turned into an annual event and an event that um, we look forward to hosting, Stephen looks forward to hosting and you turning up and, and enjoying. So thank you for coming and all the goodies I'm yet to um, imbibe and, and partake. I've definitely imbibed, so. <laughs> um, I'd like to introduce you to Karen Hodges, who I think you may know. She's the Superintendent and Fire and Control Officer for the Hawkesbury um, RFS. So uh, I will let her explain um, what this is about and, um, and then I'll back it up with some others to, to follow through. So without, I introduce you to Karen. Um, look, it's an honour and a privilege to be able to be here today to come and attend your Christmas party, but also to help celebrate the Courage on Heights Brigade's 70th anniversary. And one of the things we're doing for that anniversary is we're actually launching a book that the Brigade members have put together called Good Fire, Bad Fire. I've been around in the Hawkesbury for nearly 35 years now. Um, I tell everybody I started when I was 10, so, you know, just to cover the age gap. <laughs> And I have to say, over the 35 years I've been here at Hawkesbury, it's been a privilege to be able to see the Courage on Heights Brigade progress from what it was when I first started here. Uh, they had a two, little two-bay shed, you would call it a shed, it wasn't a station, in Tomar Street, with some very old trucks and equipment. And to see what they've got today, they've got the upgraded, it's a huge station, we call it a station now. Uh, in Powell Park, and with the upgraded trucks and equipment, and hopefully in a year or two, a new truck, but don't get too excited, Brian, but we're hoping to get a new truck for Courage on Heights 1. Um, so, yes, it's been a privilege to be able to see Courage on Heights Brigade progress over the 35 years, and also to be a part of that history. It's an honour for me as well. And, and while I'm here, I would just like to say publicly a huge thank you to all the members, both past and present, who have assisted the community by being part of the Courage on the Heights Brigade for over 70 years. It's not often we get to come to a celebration such as this for 70 years, and it's great to see that there are some members. Brian has been here nearly 70 years. No, I'm only joking. He hasn't really. <laughs> just looks that way. Uh, <laughs> I would just like to say, you know, thank you for that 70 years of service. But in particular, I would like to mention a huge thank you to all of those people that were involved in the 2019-2020 fire season. As we all know, the Gospers Mountain fire affected the Hawkesbury quite significantly. And all of those people in the brigade, they gave up their time, they gave up work, they gave up pay, they gave up family time to voluntarily go out and risk their lives to save our community. And I just want to say thank you publicly to each and every one of them. I think it's a a huge sacrifice that they gave, and I think we should all give them a round of applause for their sacrifice. I'd also like to congratulate everybody who has been party to the production of this book, Good Fire, Bad Fire. It's a brilliant uh, book, and, and Susan and Brian will talk about it a bit more. But I would just like to say that I think it's very important that we record our history. And not only should we record our history, we should take note of the lessons that people who have gone before us have learnt, both good and bad. And I'm hoping that publications such as the book we're going to launch tonight will be able to assist our future generations to come so they hopefully will read these sorts of books and learn from what we've learnt and hopefully make the community a safer place for our future generations to come. So on that note, I would just like to say once again, congratulations to Courage on Heights Brigade for 70 years of service. It's an outstanding achievement. And I would like to now formally launch the Courage on Heights Brigade 70th anniversary book, Good Fire, Bad Fire. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs> yes, I'd love to, but my mic wasn't on. Um, Brian Williams, if you don't know him already, you're about to know him. Brian Williams. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much for the big turnout here today. Fabulous. Can't thank you enough. What I would like to start with, though, I'd like to just say a few words about Karen, if I may. 
Uh, the su success that this brigade <laughs> has had has been a great deal of um, support that you've given us, Karen, over the years. Um, she's been extremely supportive. Uh, she's been in the she's been the fire control officer now for over 20 years, and that's that in itself is an outstanding achievement. Um, and Karen was the incident controller for the Gospers Mountain Fire. Um, it's the largest fire in the world that ever came from a single lightning strike. It joined in with three other fires, um, and overall there was there was more than one million hectares ablaze. And just to drive around the perimeter of that fire was the same as you leaving Carajong Heights, driving to Wagga, driving back to here, and then back to Wagga. That's how far the perimeter of this fire was. And there was thousands of people involved, helicopters, aircraft, um, fire and rescue, uh, state emergency services, army. There were so many people involved. And Karen had to oversee the entire situation. As the incident controller, she was responsible for the whole operation. That fire went for 79 days. So just put yourself in her shoes and imagine how much she had to put into it to, to be on in control for that entire time. It's just a remarkable achievement, Karen, and you should be really congratulated. An outstanding effort. Um, it's certainly been a privilege for me to be the captain of the brigade. We have such wonderful people in the brigade. Um, my job is really pretty easy because the team is, is so good. Um, they're very experienced. Um, they put their heart and soul in it. A lot of our people are self-employed and um, some, some people lost over two months' um, wages while they turned out at fire. Remember, these fires started up near Queensland and finished down near the Victorian border. So nearly five months we had teams out in the field. And that is an outstanding effort. Um, one of the reasons, and I'd just like to say this why I have the audience, um, we stopped here at Carajon Heights, we stopped the eastern progression of the Gospers Mountain Fire. And we did that, we put in a 20 kilometre back burn which started um, just a half a kilometre past the, uh, the um, sawmill on the Bells Line of Road. And we burn up right around the back here, all the way out to the valley, down through Burlow Valley, up the other side, out along a very long ridge line, and then down into the Gross River. And the reason we could do that and not lose the fire was the fact because we have an 18 block hazard reduction program around Carajong Heights. And so we were burning in low fuel levels. And that gave us the, the safety margin we needed to complete that burn. If we hadn't had that, that program in place, we would have just been another bushfire statistic here. So one of the problems we face is that, particularly when new people come to the carriage on heights to live, I might just move away so it doesn't bounce so much. Um, one, one of the reasons um, we do have, when new people come into the area, they come here to live because it's in such pristine condition. The only way it's in pristine condition is that we continue to do low intensity cool burns in the off season. And without doing those, as I said, we just become another bushfire statistic. So it's important that everyone um, realises that without fire, and that's why we call the book Good Fire, Bad Fire. Bad fire is what happened further out. Good fire is what happened here. When it, when it crossed from south to north on the Bells Line of Road, the fire self-extinguished on that. It was a catastrophic day and the RFS head office said we would burn um, and that fire got into a three-year-old hazard, hazard, hazard reduction <laughs> and self-extinguished. So um, prevention is much better than cure. The reason that we've all got homes to live here on the mountain is the fact that we do burn and we continue to burn and we'd like your support for us to continue doing that. Thank you. Um, if I have, I'd just like to make a little presentation to Karen if I could. Um, Rosette represents fire and, um, and recovery. So thanks very much, Karen. And could you please give her a big round of applause, please? And there's another tribute you'd like to hand to Julie. Yeah, we'll do that now yeah. too. Okay. Julie, uh, Braithwaite, please, Julia. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. The book is a tremendous work and an incredible effort and, and Julie virtually did this by herself um, and just got a bit of information from her few people but did a tremendous amount of research. It's an incredibly good publication and I'm absolutely sure you're really going to enjoy reading the history. It goes back a long, long way and brings you right up to, to the present day. Um, and a, an enormous effort, an incredible effort and it's really, really well done and I can't congratulate you enough and a little presentation for you as well. Okay. Thanks very much. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Um, I'd like to introduce you now to our hard-working, magnificent MP, Susan Templeman. We're just looking out who's doing what. Uh, look, it's, lo it's always lovely to be here. Do you want me to step forward? I didn't get the instructions. Um, <laughs> and be part of this really special community's Christmas celebration. And, and to, as always, Stephen, you've picked fantastic weather. You do that pretty well every year. Uh, and I, I know you know how special this place is. Uh, for me, it's, it's just wonderful to be standing here. I want to acknowledge that this land that we're on is uh, Aboriginal land and was never ceded and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. And I particularly noted in Julie's book, there is, it goes right back to First Nations days, trying to capture what we do know about how this area was inhabited uh, for probably 60 to 80,000 years. So it, it, that acknowledgement's really important where we've lost some of the um, oral histories of, of Aboriginal people, given how early this whole area was settled. Uh, and for those of you who, who feel like there's a lot more to be done in terms of healing the things that have occurred over centuries, next year with the referendum, you will have a chance to write that by recognising an Aboriginal voice in the Constitution, a very simple principle uh, but an important one. Uh, it is wonderful to be here to, among, amongst such RFS royalty, really, uh, to be part of a book launch. When, after my house burnt down in 2013, uh, a police officer called me and said, oh, I've taken all these great photos of the bush regenerating and I thought I might turn it into a book. Now, remember, I have no house, I'm homeless. I'm wearing my mother's clothes and uh, she said, I want you to help. And my brain went, okay, I'll see, Let, let's sit down and talk about it. And we brought a group of people together to have a chat. As it turns out, it was irresistible and I uh, helped uh, with a book called As the Smoke Clears, a different focus to the incredible content in this book. Uh, but what it showed me is how jolly hard it is to take ideas and a concept and turn it into an actual printed, able to be bought for $30 a copy book. <laughs> uh, and I really want to commend Julie for what she's done and those who've helped with contributing photos. Uh, I'm sure someone read her copy. Uh, and yes, there we go. <laughs> And the whole process of making sure the right caption is with the right photo and the right date is there, uh, it is, um, I can look at it and see it's a massive job. The first thing I did when I opened it though was go, oh, it's really nice paper. Uh, and it's printed locally over at Springwood, Springwood Printing in Falconbridge, who, who did ours. Uh, so it, you're supporting local businesses when you buy it as well as helping to keep the history of this really important brigade alive. And that's what these books do. Uh, Julie said to me, oh, some people might disagree with some of the interpretation of things, and that's okay. Uh, you know, the more people who try to capture history, the more sources we have. So I'd really urge you, there are wonderful, wonderful brigade members who are holding their books. Do you want to hold up your copies? Look, two copies. Uh, but the, my plea to you is please support it. It makes a great present. I can see that there's fa fascinating pieces of history there. There is a magnificent photo of Karen from 20 years ago. But you only get to see that if you buy the book. Uh, so that is why I am I've been asked to shamelessly plug it. Uh, but you, it will make you feel real pride in your community, in the people who help make this community a place where you can live. Because I have a very strong view that without the RFS, without our volunteers, without the leadership of people like Karen, 
we wouldn't be able to live in these communities with any sense of safety or certainty. Uh, and even though we know we live in a vulnerable area, it, we sleep much better at night, knowing the work that's being done year round, year after year, to make sure that if the worst happens, things are ready to respond to it. And ideally, as Brian says, to know that we've got great lines of defence in. So thank you for all being here. Thank you in advance for all the copies you're going to buy. Uh, and <laughs> congratulations to everybody who's been part of celebrating the history of this incredible brigade. Uh, you should be very proud of yourselves. Oh, and have a happy Christmas. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. No, no, no. I was about to thank Susan, but over to Brian. I, I will thank thank you, Susan Templeman, on behalf of everyone here. You you speak so well, and it is such a wonderful community here. And I'm I'm privileged to be part of it um, many many weeks of the year. So thank you very much, and a very hard working girl. This one, yeah. Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> And by the way, the books are available on the veranda there, a uh, little bit of PR. So, um, you know, wander up there and someone will be there to, um, the, Julie will be there to, 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 uh, to take the cash. Um, that's, a, that's, that's an old fashioned word now, isn't it? No one has cash. Um, have you got facility for a... No, cash. Oh. She knows where you live. Yes, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Um, but be, before I um, introduce Brian again, uh, I'd like to thank you for your, um, you know, you, 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 you've turned up and you, you do a fantastic job and it's all voluntary and just, and, and you do such work for the community in general. And from all of us, thank you very, very much. You, you do more.